Good morning, moms of Masterbooks. Today we are going to continue talking about memorization. Uh, we're going to be talking about the um, skip counting posters. And I'm also going to give you a few of my favorite tips on helping our kids memorize their multiplication facts. So let's just get started right away. I'm going to talk to you today about the, the um, first right off the bat, we're going to talk about the uh, skip counting posters. And we're going to talk about what they are, how to use them, and why they work. Okay, so what they are. I created a small one to show you. You can make these on a full-size poster board or it, uh, a half-size poster board or two pieces of cardstock glued together. You can do anything. I use this with my kids. As you can see, it is a file folder. This works really well because this stores really, really nicely in the back of a notebook or in the back of a math book or whatever. But uh, you can also leave it hanging on the wall. But I like the size because it is easily storable and it is not so overwhelming for a child to create this size of a poster. And let's be honest, it's not as overwhelming for us moms either. So I am going to show you um, how I did this particular one. You can see that it's not fancy at all. It just is using the rainbow colors. I did that on purpose so that um, you can easily see it, but also to show you that by doing this, you can create um, it, just a very easy to use uh, tool to help them learn how to skip count. So I'm not going to get stuck on this, but it's just super simple. You can make it as intricate and complicated as you want, or you can make it very, very simple, just like that. The biggest idea is to make it a permanent um, tool so that your child can see it. Okay, so it is, if you kind of notice this, it's kind of um, similar to a filled out multiplication chart. I showed you those last last week I filled it in um, as you can see I did it in um, like different colors two at a time and I'm gonna come back to that and explain to you why I did that because that's actually part of my um, that is part of my uh, memorization tips so I will come back to that okay so what it is is a study aid it's uh, similar to a multiplication chart but it's more permanent okay so how do we use them? Um, I, I think I suggest in, I think it's in level three, that uh, it is a good thing for your child to just work on it a little at a time. I generally speaking with my own kids, I had them do one or two lines um, on their skip counting poster per week when they were creating it. And they don't have to memorize all those facts while they're doing it, but as they're doing it, they will start seeing um, they will start seeing patterns. And that's one of the really, really nice things about skip counting posters and the multiplication grids. They can start seeing those patterns and they can start seeing how those numbers are going together. And they can start picking up those patterns very easily. So one of the ways that I actually used the skip counting poster with my kids is when, let's say I had a I had a child that was filling in the twos and the threes. I actually would add their hands in there and I'd have them do it out loud. After they would write out their skip counting uh, sequence and decorate it the way they wanted to, <coughs> um, we would add our hands. We'd say, I'd have them, oh, I'm trying to figure out which way I should hold my hands up. Okay. Um, I would ha add them, have them point to their fingers and do their, their multiplication, um, actually their skip counting numbers. I'd say, uh, do your twos on your hands and they would say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so when they do that, they can do, they can see that they're pointing to that number of fingers on their hands. So when you, when they are later, when they're working through their multiplication facts, they can easily, remember what what finger they were on at at what 
multiple that they were at. Okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, right? Easy to do. How about the threes? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, so on and so forth. I'm not going to sit here and do all my multiplication facts for you. But they can, they can look at this and do that on their hands. If they can do that at least a couple times a week, they're going to start remembering those. Okay, so that's one way to use it. Um, and then, let's see, why do they work? Now, this is a big one. Uh, it's just like the uh, when we were talking about the rate brain flashcards. The, the reason why they work is pretty complicated. So, again, I'm going to try to bring it down um, to something that I can fit into this video. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so one of the biggest reasons that multiplication grids and um, skip counting posters work is, like I said before, they can actually start seeing the patterns, okay? So if you look at this multiplication um, skip counting chart or poster, you can see that your child can go either down or they can go across, okay? So the twos going down, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way down, is the same as going across, okay? When they can start seeing this, when they're looking at this day after day after day, when they start seeing these facts, these, these numbers and how they go together, they start realizing that once they get down to 12 times 12, when they get to their 12s, that is the only new fact that they are learning, okay? So in reality, each one, because of the way multiplication is set up, you can switch the numbers and still come up with the right answer, right? Two times three is six, three times two is six. So when we can get that point across to our kids, when we can show them, <clears throat> when we can show them that when they learn one fact, they're actually learning two, it's very effective and it's very efficient, right? So by the time they get to the bottom and they reach uh, 12 times 12 is 144, they have mastered um, their, entire, um, their entire chart, not once but twice. And by showing them those, those patterns, it builds, um, it builds number uh, recognition, it, it builds critical thinking, it builds so many different things for them. It helps them to understand how numbers go together, not just in multiplication, but in math across the board. It starts clicking for them. It starts building that number awareness. So I'm gonna talk to you about um, my top tips for learning the multiplication facts. Number one is just be patient. This takes a long time for a lot of kids to actually master all of these, okay? And if you guys are gonna remember my top tip from last, um, the last Math Monday video, it was model it. Um, I wanna challenge all of us as moms. If we never mastered our multiplication um, facts, and it is really important to do that. And we can do it in different ways, just being patient with ourselves and not projecting our own anxiety about it onto our kids is like, is, the, is my number one tip. That's the thing that I learned um, the hardest way in homeschooling is not to project my own anxiety and insecurity about a certain thing onto my child. I know it's extremely difficult, but if we can be aware of that and be proactive in our own lives, it really does help the whole process. So that would be my number one tip. Um, show the overlapping facts. Uh, in fact, um, I used to have this big whiteboard and I would just ask my kids, okay, you guys show me all the overlapping facts that you can think of. And I would have them spend hour, an hour, a whole hour, and they would just be like competing against each other. Who can come up with the most overlapping facts? When they can see that they know the more facts than they actually think they do, it really encourages them and it encourages us as, as parents and teachers. So show those overlapping facts. Um, oh, and another thing is the, the multiplication grid. I was gonna come back to this. You'll see, 
Um, which one shall I show you? Okay, let's look at the one, the one and two row. Okay, can you see that? It's not backwards, right? Okay, one and two. If you look at both of these together, and I think I actually go into this in math, uh, the level six, and showing them all of these different patterns that they can come up with. These, both this and this, are absolutely incredible tools for not just learning multiplication, but they're learning, um, th this is kind of the forerunner for understanding equivalent fractions. Okay, so look at this. <clears throat> Let's look at one and two. That's one half, right? This is an equivalent fraction. Every single one down these rows is an equivalent fraction. So one half is the same as two, two fourths, three sixths, four eighths, five tenths, six twelfths, seven fourteenths. So if you're if your child is doing the ones and twos, they are actually taking the picture of that in their mind and they're seeing those. Later, when they get to those equivalent fractions, this is going to pop into their head. How do I know? because this is what happened to me and my no number sense at all kids that I have taught through the years. This has been such a huge and really incredible tool for them. And by having them, <clears throat> if you do this on a piece of paper, you can easily do these on paper just by writing uh, one through 12 here and one through 12 down the, the side so that they can do it fast, like in pencil on a piece of paper, on a piece of scrap paper, just have them do uh, ones through fours, okay? So ones, twos, one, two, three, and four, okay? And then have them do, take a colored pencil and color all of these together, and then another color, color all these together, and then have them look at them like a fraction. So when they're learning equivalent fractions, this is a huge, huge tool, okay? Um, when they get to prime numbers, this is a huge tool. When they get to <clears throat> um, square roots, this is a huge tool. So don't just think of this as a one stop, this is multiplication, I'm teaching my kids their multiplication facts. This is just, we're, we're laying the foundation. We're helping them to see how numbers go together, okay? And for some of us, we're just seeing it for the first time ourselves. So. It's okay for us to be like, oh my gosh, okay. Um, in, in this, also, um, I'll show you on this. There are all kinds of um, interesting patterns in numbers, okay. A lot of us know the patterns of the, um, the nines, okay, the nines times table. If you look at the nines, and you can show your kids this, and, and challenge them to see if they can find other patterns like this, okay? Um, if you look at the nines, <clears throat> 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Okay, at this, at this one right here, it flips, okay? You can start, you can show them, it says um, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, now it flips, 54, see? flip, 63, flip, 72, flip, 81, flip. So if you can show them those kinds of patterns and let them start just kind of exploring it on their own, it might actually light a fire for them to add, to start um, digging in and finding some, some of the patterns that you may not even know about. But these charts, these skip counting charts are absolutely an, a wonderful tool for that. So, okay, so we've covered the what, um, and all it is is just a permanent, it's a permanent record of, of the numbers for all of those, for all of the uh, multiplication tables, okay? It just, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be in color, it doesn't have to be any particular way, it has to be a permanent tool for your child to see day after day after day and use in their work, okay? Speaking of that, I'm going to keep an eye on the time here, okay. Speaking of that, I have seen um, many, many people say that they do not make their children memorize. Um, you, you cannot make someone else memorize something, but um, you, you can find out what is going on that's keeping them from being able to memorize it or wanting to memorize it, okay? I go into great 
great detail in this um, in the teacher's companion, which is going to be out really soon. I'm super excited about that. I go into great detail, and uh, one of, and I talked last week about the importance of memorization and how it strengthens our brains and how we just don't do it that much in our culture. But with memorization, memorizing the facts, they don't, you don't have to do it a certain way, like I said before, and, you, and it doesn't have to take a certain amount of time, like I said before. It's, it might take longer for some students than it does for others, and that's fine. That's fine. But really the attitude, um, you've heard the expression 99% of everything is the attitude. Well, it's true. Um, if, if your child, and when I say your child, I'm, I'm pulling from my own experience with my own children because everything that I say to you, I have lived with my own kids, okay? Uh, I have four very, very different children, very different from each other. And I have dealt with this. I had one who did not want to memorize. They copped an attitude with me every time I said, you need to memorize your, your sixes or, or your eights or whatever. I can't, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't, put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. And one time I was talking to one of my very, very dear mentors and I was just kind of belly aching to him. And I was like, you know what? I, I give up on this kid. I'm just, you know what? I can't make him memorize. And my mentor said, you know what? You're right. You can't. Um, but you can find out what's going on underneath it. What's what's the cause of this issue? And I was like, mm. you know, I'm so sick of dealing with this. I don't even want to think about it. And he said, well, you're the parent, so you need to do that. Said, you're right. Okay, let's find out. And I said, well, how do I find out? And he said, start from the, start from the outside and go in. So does your child actually deal with something physically that is keeping them from memorizing. I'm like, no, there's nothing keeping them from memorizing. They, they do, they, they do all of this when they want to learn, if they, if they want to memorize um, game scores or, or a book or whatever, they memorize whatever they want. So there's nothing wrong there. I said, okay, then work your way in. What else is going on? Think about this child's life. Are they, um, showing this type of behavior in other areas of their life. And I had to be honest, they were. They were showing this uh, this belligerent, um, I'm not going to do it, or I don't want to do it, or the procrastination in several areas of their life that I it was, it was demanding discipline of, self-discipline of them to do it. And I thought, wow, okay, yeah, I'm seeing the pattern. So I told him, I, I do, I see a pattern in these other areas. And they said, well, he said to me, he's like, what you're dealing with is a heart issue then. And, and he asked me a really hard question. He said, are you yourself modeling self-discipline for this child? Ouch, really big ouch. So needless to say, I did a lot of self observation and I tightened up some areas in my life. I apologize to the, to the child for not modeling and expecting something of him that I wasn't expecting of myself. And um, it made a huge difference. And no, they didn't memorize the multiplication table overnight, but there was a switch. Something happened and we worked through it and we conquered it. So those are, um, those are my multiplication um, memory tips. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, model it, work with them, be, be creative in ways. I, I love you guys and I love your kids, but I don't know you and I don't know your kids. You do. And God gave them to you for a reason and he will give you wisdom. <clears throat> but we all have to be teachable. We all have to be willing to rise to the occasion and and stretch our boundaries and and become better in areas that we all need to become better in. So that is what I have to say today. And um, I am going to um, I'm going to do a little bit of a. Um, I, I know I keep saying that I'm going to do these posts. I'm, I'm kind of putting together this big major post for Math Mondays, and I'm actually going to go through each of my topics and write out some specific tips 
um, that I've given you and some that I might have remembered that I wanted to give you and I forgot. So I am going to put together a, um, a post. It'll probably come out around Thanksgiving of just a conglomeration of all kinds of tips so that you can go back and look at them. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, guys, I apologize for my coughing. Um, but today I'm just, I'm going to end in prayer and, um, you guys have a great, awesome week and, uh, go, go get them Win win the day. So I'm going to pray Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for this new day. And we thank you that you love us and you care for us in every single aspect of our life. Lord, thank you for being God of numbers, God of patterns, the God of absolutes that never, that never change and never go away. Lord, I ask you for wisdom for these moms and for myself as we teach our kids. And we just thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. Just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.